What's up everyone? It's Carla and welcome to Transit Online. Today we are in part 2 of our series called This or That. A series that we hope will help you avoid the traps of comparison and jealousy. We don't often realize it, but jealousy has a huge and a negative impact in our lives and our relationships. But there's an alternative to jealousy and that's what today is all about. I'll see you guys after. to see you again. I know you could choose to be anywhere else right now, but I am so excited you chose to be here. My name is Ashley and I love to talk about things that matter and that we all deal with on a daily basis. And the thing I have on my mind this week is comparison. You know, when we hold this in our lives next to that in someone else's life. You know what I mean, right? We've all been there. And I don't know about you, but anytime I catch myself comparing my this to someone else's that, I feel disappointed, hopeless, frustrated, anxious, or sometimes I even feel motivated. And sometimes even like, I'm better than others. One of the most powerful feelings comparison brings out in us is the feeling of jealousy. In fact, I recently found my eighth grade journal that my best friend Jenny and I used to pass back and forth to each other in the hallway at school. I would write to her and then I'd see her in the hallway, pass it to her. She'd write back to me and pass it back to me. All of that lives in a spiral notebook that happens to be sitting on my bookshelf at home. Throughout the entire journal, I wrote about how I wanted the guy my best friend was dating to like me. His name was Jason. Jason and I were best friends, but he always liked my friends, never me. It was clear in my many notes to Jenny that I was extremely jealous of any girl he was hanging out with. I would get angry at the girls he liked. I would say awful things about them, or even worse, I would pretend I was their friend to their face and then try and get Jason to break up with them behind their back. Awful, I know. See. Jealousy is a very specific type of comparison. It's what we feel when we want what someone else has, and it happens more than we may realize. When that person in your youth group comes in with a new pair of name brand sneakers, and you're still rocking the ones from last season, mm. When your friend is so much fun that everybody wants to be around them and you can't seem to muster up even a little bit of that kind of popularity. Or when your teammate has two parents living at home, but you have a family that's, well, complicated? When someone gets the solo or your sibling gets more attention or that girl has better clothes or that boy was named team captain, the list could go on and on, right? If we are really honest, jealousy can show up anywhere and everywhere. And while it may not seem like that big of a deal at first, jealousy has a lot of potential to do harm to both the way we see ourselves and the way we see and treat others. For starters, jealousy can cause us to feel insecure. The more jealous we become of someone else, the more insecure or uncertain we feel about ourselves. And that insecurity can quickly lead to us becoming unhappy. Unhappy with our stuff, unhappy with our appearance, unhappy with our friend group, unhappy with our family and our status at school. It's hard to be happy with any part of what we have or who we are when we're letting jealousy motivate the way we see it. Like I shared about my own middle school journal, sometimes we end up angry. We're so jealous of what the other person has that we get mad. Mad at our parents for not letting us have what we want, mad at God for not giving us the life they have, and sometimes mad at the other person for simply having what we want. Or maybe we don't experience a lot of jealousy when we compare ourselves to others because we feel pretty good about our lives. When we look at our this compared to other people's that, honestly, we might feel better than them. We might even look down on other people because we feel they don't measure up. But the problem with comparison is that it's a cycle. While we may feel great about our lives right now, it's never enough, is it? So we keep comparing. We keep trying to measure ourselves to others and eventually keep getting jealous. It never stops, even when you get older. And this is where jealousy gets really tricky because it doesn't just impact us, it impacts our relationships with other people. When we're jealous of someone else, we sometimes start keeping our distance from them. We avoid them because we don't wanna deal with the jealousy we feel when we're around them. Or we start talking about them behind their backs. We tear them down to make ourselves feel better. And eventually, 
We stop being able to be happy for them at all. We stop being able to celebrate the good things in their lives because it only reminds us of what's missing in ours. That's what jealousy does. It keeps us from celebrating the good things around us, both in our lives and in the lives of others. I don't know about you, but that's just not the kind of life I want, at least not anymore. I don't wanna be unhappy simply because this in my life doesn't compare to that in someone else's. I don't want to be the kind of friend or family member or teammate or a member of a friend group that can't be happy for somebody else. So what do we do? How do we keep ourselves from letting jealousy in comparison change the way we see ourselves and others? Well, here's what I've learned. People have been dealing with this whole jealousy thing for thousands of years. So much so that the Bible has story after story of people whose lives were affected by it. One of those people is a guy named David. His story is crazy because he went from being a shepherd boy to a hero on the battlefield to a king. Now at first, the king of Israel at the time, a guy named Saul, liked David. After all, David killed a giant named Goliath and saved the nation during battle. That was a big win for Saul's army. Excited over the victory, the people of Israel greeted King Saul with a parade to celebrate as the army returned home from battle. And that's when things started to change. See, Saul had a major issue with the way the people decided to celebrate. The song they sang celebrated both King Saul and David. And as king, Saul didn't want to share his fame and popularity. Take a look at his response. This made Saul very angry. What's this, he said. They credit David with 10,000s and me with only thousands? Next, they'll be making him their king. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. See what happened there? Just like that. Jealousy changed the way Saul viewed David. And eventually, that jealousy changed the way he treated David. Saul's jealousy got so bad that he even tried to kill David. Not once, not twice, multiple times. Why? Because he was jealous. Saul was happy with his life and even his relationship with David until he started comparing himself to David. That comparison led to jealousy and that jealousy changed everything. It changed Saul. It changed his relationship with David and it consumed a big part of Saul's life. Saul spent a lot of his reign as king thinking of ways to hurt David. I know that's a dramatic story, but that's what jealousy has the power to do, to change the way we see what we have, to destroy our relationships with other people, to kill our ability to celebrate the good things happening in our lives and in theirs. When we compare ourselves to other people, we end up not celebrating others or ourselves in the process. In another place in the Bible, a book filled with wisdom called Proverbs, the writer explained jealousy this way. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Envy is just another way to say jealousy. And as the writer of this proverb said, it has the potential to rot or break down your bones. Of course, it won't literally do that. The writer was simply painting a picture of the way jealousy impacts our life from the inside out. But think about your bones for a second. They're a pretty important part of your body. They're the core of what holds you up. They're what makes the shape of you. The writer of this proverb was painting a pretty awful picture that envy hits at the core of who you are. Jealousy rots you to the core. It decays, it breaks you down, it eats at you. That's what happened to Saul. Jealousy rotted everything in his life. It consumed him so much so that he could hardly lead the nation because of it. But David, he kept his heart at peace. And as the proverb tells us, that's what gives life to the body. See, while jealousy breaks down, peace built up. So even though David was hurt by Saul's jealousy, he never went down the road of comparison with Saul himself. David kept his eyes on the good in his life and that helped him stay at peace. And the same can be true for us. I know it's true for me. When I keep my eyes focused on what I do have, I find more peace. When I stop focusing on what others have, I'm better able to enjoy the good in my life and the good in theirs. Because the truth is this, when we stop comparing, we can better celebrate others and ourselves. So 
How do we avoid comparison and jealousy and instead choose to celebrate others and ourselves? I think we can begin by doing two things. First, start with you. Think about what you do have that's worth celebrating. And trust me, there is something you have that's worth celebrating. Maybe it's a good relationship with your parents or a cool older sibling or one solid best friend. Maybe it's the fact that you made the team or simply had the courage to try out. Maybe it's a sunny day or a song you really love or the fact that you know God loves you. Big or small, start avoiding jealousy by celebrating the good in your own life. Then celebrate someone else. Celebrate someone else, and I don't just mean anybody else. I want you to try to find a way to celebrate the person that you are jealous of right now. I know, that's not gonna be easy. But remember, celebration will help you move toward peace, and peace will build you up. This is just as much for you as it is for the other person. So congratulate them for getting the lead in the play, or compliment their new skateboard trick, or talk positively about them with your friends. And if all you can do is pray for them, that works too. Prayer is a great place to start celebrating and appreciating someone else. Here's the thing. I think we could all use a little practice when it comes to celebrating ourselves and celebrating others, right? That's why I went searching for some gifts or gifs or gifs or gifs. I'm not sure what you call it. So I asked some of my friends to see if they could celebrate the way the gif celebrated. And they did. Let me show you. I don't know about you, but now I want to go out and celebrate everything and everyone in my life. So this week, whatever you choose to do, take a step to celebrate the good in your life and the lives of those around you. Because when we stop comparing, we can better celebrate others and ourselves. We know it's easy to talk about this, but it's not as simple to actually do it. That's why we made sure everyone in this room has a group leader. Your group leader shows up every week because they care about you. They want to celebrate you and help you celebrate other people. They wanna help you practice this stuff because they know it can change your life for the better. So, as you head to group, think about opening up to your group leader as you answer this question. What's one thing or person I can celebrate? <laughs> Jealousy is a mindset and I know it's not always easy to see in ourselves and it's definitely not easy to get over. But when we stop comparing, we can better celebrate ourselves and others. That's the bottom line for this week. We can enjoy the little things better, we can enjoy our life better. Our relationships will be much better when we stop comparing. Let's talk about it more in our online small group today. I hope to see you guys there. And join us next week for the last part of this or that. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great weekend. Bye.